Hi, my name is Darren Mostyn, and in this episode, I'm going to revisit these scopes. So I did an episode on the scopes when I first started the channel, and it's proved to be one of the more popular ones that I did. So I thought it's worth revisiting now that we're on version 17, because the scopes have changed quite a bit. And this episode is going to focus particularly on getting the best out of the vector scope. Now, just to warn you, the first couple of minutes or so are for absolute beginners. So I'll do a real beginner's guide to what a vector scope is. So I'll put some timestamps in the description, and you can forward that bit if it's not relevant to you. So let's go and take a look. So just before we go and take a look at the vector scope, I just want to clarify that the grayscale we've got here represented on our waveform is showing our brightness level, so it's luminance. Now if we go onto the vector scope, all the vector scope is reading is saturation and hue, so it's looking for color. It's saturation and hue only. So the grayscale, doesn't matter how bright it is, is not represented at all on this vector scope. It's just seen as a dot in the middle because the very middle of the vector scope is zero saturation, so it's got no color at all. So the further out we go in the vector scope, the more saturation we're seeing and hue is going around the outside. So let me show you, if I put some color into this grayscale, let me push it towards magenta, you'll see that our vector scope is now increasing in saturation and hue and pushing us towards this box here, which is represented by magenta. So we've got red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow. So these are represented around the outside. So let's have a look at a color bar. So this is a standard EBU color bar. So this is a broadcast color bar and the colors in here are set to 75% amplitude. So they are 75% of the total output they could be. And each of these boxes in here is sitting at a 75% value. And that is quite important because in broadcast, 75% amplitude is your broadcast legal range. So you can't go outside of that for Rec 709 HD broadcast. So we need to be sitting inside these boxes. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up this vector scope. If I press Command, Shift, and W, I can actually open that out into a larger scope. So it's now in its own window. So this could actually be set on a separate monitor, allowing me to have uh, full screen scopes all the time, which is how I work. So here we can see all the colors sitting exactly in the 75% mark that we've got here. And if we go into our settings up here and go to vector scope, we can actually save these settings to be something else. So we could set it to be 100% target. Now, if I go to 100% targets, in fact, what I'm gonna do is put on 75% and 100% targets. So our EBU bars sit safely inside 75%. Now, if I move on to these bars, these are SMPTE bars, so they're slightly different in the fact that they have uh, four 100% amplitude boxes. So you can see these red, blue, cyan, and yellow sitting in these 100% marks. And all the other ones are sitting comfortably in the 75% bars. So these four outside ones are illegal for Rec. 709 broadcast. So just to show you, there are other ways of displaying this as well. You don't have to have just uh, this view. You can change the view. So if I go in here, this is standard view. You can go to a simplified view, or you can go to this one, which is quite interesting, which is the hue vectors view. So these colored lines on the end are appearing because we have 100% view on. So if I take that off and go back to 75%, you see that we've got our red, magenta, blue, etc., And the line here, the little cross line here, is our 75% point. So this is quite an interesting scope, but I do prefer to work with the standard one. Also down here, you can take off the labels if you want. So let's move on to an image and analyze it in the scope. I'm just gonna finish off this menu. So we've also got in here the ability to display qualifier focus. And what that does is allow me to, if I just select a qualifier, it allows me to just go around my image and I can see it represented on the vector scope by that circle. So you can see here, if I go to the blacks, obviously it's gonna be central. And if I go to this warmer area, it's pointing up more towards the red and yellow on the scope. So that's quite a useful tool. And also in here, we've got the ability to enable a low pass filter, which basically takes out any signal noise that there might be that's not recognized on the scope. And finally down here, we've got the quality. So we can choose a low, medium, or high quality trace and that will just update on our scope. If you've got a lower powered computer, you might wanna just leave that onto auto as it does rely on GPU power. 
So what's happening here on the trace on the scope? Well, what it's showing the image is not actually sitting centrally on the scope. So that would indicate that it's not neutral in balance. And we can see on the image here, it's biasing towards this sort of red and yellows on the scope. And that's because the image is quite clearly very warm. Now that doesn't mean it's wrong, but let's just see what happens if I move offset and try and neutralize this. So I'm just gonna bring it over and get the image a bit more central in the scope. And we can see whilst the trace looks nice and neutral, it's actually not doing us any favor on that image. So that's really just to point out that the image doesn't have to be sitting centrally in here. So let's open up the main vector scope menu. At the moment we're set to all, which means we're looking at the low saturation range, mid saturation and high saturation. These are all combined here. And we have the ability to just look at the lower saturated parts, the higher saturated parts, and the mid saturation. So I'm gonna leave that on all for now. And looking at our image here, what I want to do is just check that there is nothing not being picked up by the scope. And to do that, if I press extents, what it does is it shows us areas that are not being picked up by the trace. So we can see here that we're actually got a slight bit going outside of legal. So there's a little point here that's not being picked up by the regular trace. So in order to see what that is, if I go to my saturation tool here, what I can do is put on my highlight. So what I'm doing is I'm selecting saturation from low saturation and bringing it up to high saturation. And quite quickly, we can see what's being picked up. And it's just that bit off her watch. This is obviously showing here because that's the gray background in here, but this is this tiny little bit here. So let me just reset that saturation. So if I just take that down for a sec, let's just reset that. Command Shift W. So I could probably clean that up using uh, a little bit of desaturation or using my highlights, but I'm gonna leave it there for now because I just wanna make some adjustments. So what we're gonna do is use the vector scope to our advantage and I'm gonna switch into low mode. So this is just looking at the lower areas of saturation. It's my more my blacks. And what I'm gonna do is try and centralize this, try and neutralize those blacks. So at the minute we're slightly off center. I'm just gonna to come to my lift tool, which adjusts my blacks. I'm just gonna bring that down slightly so it's a bit more neutral. So those blacks are looking better already just with that simple move. So let's do the same with our highs. So I'm gonna switch onto high mode and I'm gonna see if naturally if that helps that legal range. So we're slightly warm again. So I'm gonna to go to my gain. I'm just gonna cool it off and it's only affecting the high regions. So there, that's now sitting more centrally on my scope. And I'm just gonna switch that node on and off using Command D. And there, so what we've done is neutralized the highlights and the shadows, but kept our mid range. Now I'm just gonna put my gain back a little bit. I think that's just gone a little bit too cool. Now what you can do on the scope here, because we've only got a very small area showing for our highlights, is you can click in here and you can say show two times zoom. And what that does is just magnify the trace so we can see clearer what's going on. So I'm just gonna move that a little bit more. Let's see if I can get that literally sitting exactly central. And you can see that's clearing up the whites in the clouds. So I'm gonna put my extents back on. Obviously I've gotta take the two time zoom off. So we can see now that we are actually naturally legal again. So just by adjusting that amount in the gain, we've brought that bit of saturation back into legal range. So let's take the extents back off. You can adjust obviously the amount of scope that you've got here and the brightness of the graticle. And we can also adjust the low range and high range. So what is determined here? Where, where is your low point and where's your high point? I'm quite happy with it sat where it is. So I'm gonna put that back to all. And oh, in fact, I can actually make this image bigger. Let's get rid of the clips and let's get rid of the gallery. I should have done that to start with really. And I just wanna show you, finally on here, we've got the skin tone indicator. So this is the line that we use as a guide for the skin tone. And it is just a guide. And to show you how that works, if I just sample some skin using the qualifier, there we can see that, but it's actually picking up other stuff there. So what I can do is just draw a little window. Oh, there we go. And that's just isolated skin. You can see it's just slightly off. So I could pull a key on that skin tone now and just make those adjustments. But I'm not gonna do that in this episode. What I want to do is show you how I can set these scopes up to be a little bit more useful. So just before we finish this episode, if you've got anything out of it or you've enjoyed it, hit the like button for me, hit the subscription, look after yourself, and let's go and take a look at the rest. So I'm gonna bring the scopes back up. And up here, you've got these different views. So we've got a two view, You've got a four view and you've now with version 17, you've got nine views. So you can actually view nine different scopes. 
So we could have parade histogram waveform, but what I want to do is adjust the vector scope so that we're seeing more than just one vector scope. So I'm just going to four view just for this exercise. Normally I would have these on, or I'd recommend you have these on as uh, nine view on a completely separate monitor if you can afford to do that. So I'm gonna change all of these to be vector scopes. And what I'm gonna do is change each one individually to show me a different region. So I'm gonna have this one show me my lows. And what I'm also gonna do is put a two time zoom on that. I don't want the skin tone indicator on the lows. I'm gonna put a two time zoom. So we're zooming in to the desaturated areas, i.e. the blacks, okay? I'm gonna move over to this one and I'm gonna make this high. Again, put the two times indicator on. There's no point in having the extents on if you're in two time zoom because obviously the 75% safe pots are not moving. So down here, I might just brighten that one up a little bit. So down here, this one is gonna be my mids and I'm not gonna zoom that one in, that's fine like that. I'm gonna take the skin, oh, I might leave the skin tone indicator on that, but I really want the skin tone indicator on the all one. So I'm gonna put the skin tone indicator on. This one's on all, and this one stays not at two times, so I can see what's going on. So I can now see my shadows, my highlights, midtones, and overall view with the skin tone line on there. So this allows you to do really quick neutralization of the blacks, getting neutral whites, and just looking at your overall saturation and hue levels, but checking that they're legal at the same time.